Today we will be discussing the federal ethics questions involved in disqualification motions brought in federal court. When you can bring these motions, when you cannot bring these motions, and the governing standards and patchwork of ethical rules that apply to attorney conduct and regulate attorney conduct in this area. As part of the petri dish, so to speak, with which we will start exploring these issues, we're going to go back to the Cold War. And during the Cold War, there was a series of deportation trials in what was the longest and most bitter deportation battle in American history. It was a set of proceedings that lasted a full 20 years brought by the U.S. government against a labor longshoreman named Harry Bridges. This is an area I've researched heavily, and in fact, I've written a book on the deportation trials that spanned the 20 years of Harry Bridges' life as the government pursued him. This took place between the 1930s and 1950s, and in his third trial, it was set in San Francisco, in the federal courts in San Francisco, and at the time, it was the longest criminal trial in the federal courts in San Francisco history. That third trial spawned one of the most bitter disqualification battles that ever occurred in the courts, culminating in lawyers being jailed. From there, we will travel through time to the current day, and we will look at a variety of different ethical questions that confront lawyers when seeking disqualification. We will look at the scenarios of judges' relationships with parties, the judges' relationships with witnesses, judges' relationships with the lawyers. And we will end with race questions and the complex issues that are raised when race is an issue and people have race-based challenges to the nature of judicial comments. Culminating, of course, in the most recent controversy involving Donald Trump and his race charge against a federal judge in San Diego. So sit back, get your popcorn, and if you're so inclined, get a cocktail, and we will get going. One of